Learn Java the hard way. Exercise zero. The setup. Windows Vista. So right, this exercise I'm going to show you how to install the required Java compiler and the rest of the tools on a Windows machine. I have a virtual machine here with um, Windows Vista set up on it so I'm just going to show you how to go step by step and do it. If you have a different version of Windows hopefully the steps should be about the same. So we're going to start out by going to learnjavathehardway.org and we're going to click on the link that says read the first 16 chapters for free. Then you're going to click here where it says exercise zero, the setup. And if you've never used a command prompt before or a terminal window, uh, you should consider going through Zed Shaw's uh, command line crash course, which is pretty good and free. Um, but because you will need to, you need to know how to use the command prompt for this book. Um, so I'm going to scroll down now to the section where it says Windows. And we're going to say go to notepad++.org with your web browser. So I'm going to right click on that and say open a new tab. You could also middle click on that link, that is click with your mouse wheel. And that should also open it up in a new tab. And we're going to go here and I'm going to click on the download link on the left. And then I'm going to scroll down a little bit where it has says Notepad++ installer in green. And I'm going to click on that. Now Internet Explorer is going to ask me if I want to run or save it. I'm going to say save. And it's going to ask me where I want to do that. Now I'm not actually going to click save because I've already downloaded it for the purposes of time because my internet is pretty slow here. So um, we will pretend we downloaded that and it's in the folder there. All right, so now you can close that window and you can minimize this. Now we're going to go to that window there. So if you see right here, right above your documents link, there should also be a link that has your login name in it. So if you click on that, you know, there should be a folder called downloads here. And then if you double click there, then you should see the download. Now I've already downloaded both. So there's the Notepad++ installer. All right, so you double click that to install it. It's going to say, are you sure you want to do this? You say, sure, I love that. Um, we're going to install it in English unless you prefer to install it in a different language. And then we're just basically going to accept all the defaults. So next, I agree with this very generous license. The default location is fine. Again, you can change that if you have strong opinions, but this is all fine and you can click to create the shortcut on the desktop if you want and then you can click install and it doesn't take too long to install and then there you go I'm not going to run it yet now we want to be able to get to notepad plus plus easily so what I'm going to recommend is go down here to the start menu and see where it says all programs you'll notice that that's gray if you hover over it for a second it automatically opens but um, right here there's this notepad plus plus folder so if you go in there you can see the icon for the notepad plus plus application if you right click on that you can choose add to quick launch or pin to start menu I like to start menu myself but whatever so if you click right there so now if we go back you'll see that right there there's notepad plus plus so it should look a little bit something like that um, it may show you a change log when you launch it right there so it might have a change.log open you can just close that uh, it'll always have one file open so if you close it it'll continue to open new files okay so we're gonna close that for now because we don't really need it but it's nice that we can actually get to it right here okay so now we're gonna go back to the instructions and we're gonna run PowerShell um, to make sure that we've got that there so I'm gonna go down here where it says search and I'm gonna type P-O-W-E-R and you should have a few options there. Make sure you choose the first one. We want PowerShell, not the ISE, and not the modules. So if you click on that, it should open up a little PowerShell program like this that starts in a, in a folder. Um, I'm going to minimize that because we don't need that right now. If you want to, you could also go here and right-click on that and say Add to Quick Launch or Pin to Start Menu if you want for those two because we're going to be using PowerShell a lot as well 
So I'm going to pin add the pin to the start menu is what I'm going to do. So now it's up here, which I like. Um, all right. Now we need to install the Java compiler or the JDK that stands for Java Development Kit. So I'm going to open up this link here to oracle.com that I've provided. And we'll go to this page. It takes a little while to show in my browser for some reason. So I apologize for the wait. Okay. So you should see something like this. And then over here, you're going to have this big Java download icon where it says Java Platform JDK 8U11. Um, it could be a different version by the time you're watching this video, but any version that's right there is fine. So we're just going to click here and say download. That's going to take us to the current most recent downloads page. Hopefully. You can do it, Internet. You can show me this page. Okay, so there it is. So you have to accept this Oracle license agreement in order to be able to download this, but it is it is free. So um, just click where it says accept license agreement. Um, and then you want to skip down here to the downloads for Windows. Now, if you are absolutely certain that you are running a 64-bit version of Windows on a 64-bit machine, then you can download the Windows 64 version and that will be fine. But if you don't know, or you're not sure, then you should choose this one for Windows x86. That's a 32-bit version. The 32-bit version will run on either the 64-bit Windows or regular 32-bit Windows, um, whereas this one will only run on the 64-bit version. So if you don't know, this one is safe because it will run on either one. So we're going to click that link right there. And it will say, do you want to run or save this file? I'm going to say save. It asked me where I want to save it. Now, of course, I've already downloaded it, so we won't make you wait for that. So I'll just pretend that I've done that. And then I'm going to go back. I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I'm going to go back to the folder we were in earlier, right here, the Downloads folder. And you'll see this is the installer. So I'm going to double-click on that right there. And it takes a while to launch. Um, it's it's a pretty big program. So I apologize for the wait. I know this video is a little boring um, because you're having to wait on this machine, but you're having to wait for it on your machine too. Okay. Do you want this to continue? Yes, I do. Absolutely. And now you'll notice that when it pops up at first, it says it's preparing the installation wizard, which means that you won't be able to click anything yet. Don't worry about that. Just wait it out. It'll take a few seconds to do, depending on the speed of your machine. Hopefully your computer is faster than mine. Um, okay, so finally it goes here. Now, with Notepad++, I said it was okay to, to put it wherever you want to, but for this one, I would strongly recommend that you just let the defaults, don't change any defaults at all. Just click next on everything, no matter what it says. All right, if you really, really know what you're doing and you want to take the the fall for that, then, then you can do that. But I really would recommend just leaving the defaults as they are. So we're going to click next. We're going to click next. It's going to validate the install. Removing files, possibly. I don't know what it's doing. So this is going to take a while, so I'm going to pause and then resume the video when it's done. Okay, so eventually it should pop up this right here, and then we can see it wants to put it right there, and you should leave it alone. This is the JRE, which is different even than the JDK. It'll pop up this little guy right here, and this may take a while too. So eventually the install will finish, and you will see Java SE Development Kit 8 Update 11 successfully installed, or whichever version. Um, we don't need any of that stuff right there. We're just going to click Close right here. Okay, so we're mostly there. Now we have to do the hard thing, um, which is we have to install the the path to an environment, to the to environment path variable. So what I'm going to do here 
is we need to find exactly which folder that was installed in. So we're going to go here. I want to go to where it says computer. And inside there, you want to go in the C drive. And this is a 32-bit version of Windows that I'm running, so I only have program files. If you're running a 64-bit version, you'll have a program files and one that's called program files x86. Um, so you may have to look in both to find out where it is. So mine's only in program files, and there's a folder called Java in there. And inside there, the one we want is called JDK. If you don't see one called JDK, go back to the C drive again and look in the program files x86 and see. You have to see one called JDK. If you don't have the JDK one, it's the wrong one. So we're going to click right there. And you should see a folder called bin inside there. So I'm going to double click to go inside the bin folder. And this is the path that I want. So if you click on the left here where there's that little folder icon, it should make it like this. And it should be highlighted for you. So you can right click on that and choose copy. And that will copy it to the clipboard. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our PowerShell. If you accidentally close PowerShell, then you know we need to open it up again. So go here, open up PowerShell. And what we're going to type is we're basically going to type what is right here, this entire line, starting with the square bracket, environment, close square bracket, colon, colon, all this stuff, except we have to substitute the the folder where, where stuff actually is for what's written right here. So you probably don't want to use that right there. So here's what we're going to do. Um, we are going to copy all this right here up to and including where it says path. Okay, actually, let me open Notepad++ because I want to paste this location right here. So we're going to highlight, you can so you can click and highlight all the way up to and including that semicolon right there. And right click and say copy. And then we go to PowerShell. And you should just be able to right click and it will automatically paste what's in the clipboard. So it should look like that, up to the semicolon. Now we're going to go take this address, this uh, file path right here, and say copy. Go to PowerShell and right click. And then we need to get what's left, which is um, close quote, comma, up to where it says user. If you highlight if you highlight one space past there, it'll have the enter already. You probably don't want that. So say copy there. Go right here and right click. And so notice that it basically hit enter for me and there was not an error. That means I typed everything correctly. If for some reason you found that there was an error, you can just press the up arrow on your keyboard to get it back and use the left and right arrows to sort of change what you did wrong and then hit enter again, you know, to maybe to maybe fix it. Okay, once that's done, you have to close PowerShell. So you can type the word exit there or you can just hit the X to close it because if you don't close PowerShell and restart it, the change you made won't take effect. So now we're going to open up PowerShell again, and now finally the moment of truth. What you're going to do is you're going to type Java C, J A V A C, dash version. So that's a hyphen version. And hit enter. And it should take a second and print out the version of the Java compiler that's installed. In this case, it's 1.8.0 underscore 11. If that gives you an error message, like what if I had typed you know this, if it gives you an error message like that, then that means that you did something incorrectly in a previous step. So make sure that you typed everything there right, make sure that your environment line is was correct and that there weren't any typos in that. But when you get it when you get it working, it should say Java C dash version. So once you've done that correctly, then you you're you're almost done. That's pretty much the hardest part of the whole thing. Okay, so there's a couple more steps to do. We are going to learn how to create a folder from the terminal window, which is PowerShell. So we're going to make a directory that you can put all your code from the book in. I'm going to call it Java code. So I'm going to type MKDIR, that stands for make directory, Java code. 
And so it should say that there's now a directory called Java code that's created. Now I'm going to go back to Notepad++ to create a file called test.txt. So I'm going to go here and say this is a test and I'm going to click save and by default it's going to want to save it in the Notepad++ folder. So if you click this little down arrow here you should be able to choose the folder that has your name on it. We're going to go and if you move down a little bit you'll see that there's this Java code folder now. So you go there and I want to call this file test, test, and click save. And now test.txt should be right there. So now I have challenged you to use only your keyboard to go back to the PowerShell. So I know that I'm going to use Alt-Tab to do that. And then I'm going to type ls, and I'm going to type cd java code to change into the java code directory. And notice that my prompt changes Okay, I typed clear to clear the screen there. Notice that my prompt changes, and if I type ls, I should see that there's a file called test.txt, which on my machine is 15 bytes in size because I put, you know, that, that sentence in there. So that should be it. Um, so once you've done that, you're ready to do exercise one, where you're actually going to be creating your first program and compiling it on the command prompt. So if you had any errors, then go back and uh, look at you what you did again and make sure and double check everything to get it all right. So hopefully that was helpful to you. Um, and because truly that exercise is the hardest one, followed by the next exercise, which is also the hardest. But if you can do exercise zero and exercise one, then you are good enough that you could learn to finish the whole rest of the book. So don't give up. Don't quit. Um, what you're doing is hard, and that's why most people don't do it. So keep on, keep on pushing yourself, and, and you'll get it learned. All right? So thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the next exercise.